Right, how's it going? I'm Leonard Barry. Um, and I'm going to play a few tracks off a CD that I released there a few months ago called, a track called, called Kitty Got a Clinking. It's Kitty Got a Clinking? Kitty Got a Clinking. It's what a about the milking? It's, yeah, it's a tune that I got off Jack Regan, a fiddle player from Cosme. Um, and when I asked Jack what a clinking was, he says, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to get one anyway. <laughs> and the second tune is a tune that was composed by Hammy Hamilton for his daughter. It's called Sarah's Reel. And the last one is a tune called The Bog Carrot. I suppose it was originally a two-part tune, and I think Jackie Daly added the third part to it. And there's a track off the CD called New Road. Like I said, it released it a few months ago, so... So John has to answer his phone now. Sorry. <laughs> Work away. So we'll play this. <laughs> Sorry about that intrusion at the start. I was no sure problem, I had it on, on silent. <laughs> no um, you are just up from a, a, a tunnel in, yeah. in the stall of pipers. Yeah, the annual gathering of pipers to the national tea and all was on in the stall this weekend. It's kind of where they have the AGM. And oh, I see. Start out all their business for the year, I suppose. And so so hundreds of pipers from all over the world, is it? From all over the world, yeah. There was people over from America, 
Holland, Germany, and all over the country as well, do you know? Wow. So it's like the Listow Lambs just booked out the weekend and wall to wall pipes. Lovely. Yeah. And was that agreeable to a piper, having hundreds of pipes playing at the one time, yeah? Is it, it heaven? It is great. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought with pipers that you're in a constant state of angst and turmoil over pipes being tuned or in tune or out of tune. Oh, are, is it a constant are, fight? It, it's constant. Like even there now, when I was playing, I could sit here one or two, you know? Right. Because you're taking a motor. This hour of the morning. Right? <laughs> <laughs> After abuse from the night before, is it? Exactly, yeah, yeah. Right. There is this constant, you're constantly maintaining them. Right. You know? Like, in a way, learning them, it's as important to learn the maintenance as it is to play them. And do you make your own reads now for that? No. I started making reads about 18 months ago, and Mick O'Brien from Dublin does my reads, and they're not near that standard, so I, see. I have a little bit more to go yet. Okay, right. <laughs> and listen, the set of pipes you have now, because you were telling me a story about a Rossum set that was on sale down in Listowel this weekend. Yeah, just gone. sets everywhere, like, you know what I mean? The, the set I have is from Victor Mullally. Right, where does he...? He, he lives in South Kilkenny. All right. And himself and Mick O'Brien have worked together, and another young man, John Toohey from Kilkenny, they kind of spent an awful lot of time researching and, and right. designs and everything. And so that's where I got this. And it, well, quite kind of a waiting list will be on that, because I know there are serious waiting lists on, on instruments. Well, like, Victor is, what it, like, I'd say, you'd probably be waiting around 12 months to two years from Victor now, which is really good. All right. You know? Yeah. With other makers, you're talking about waiting... Seven, eight oh God. years, you know. And who would be the most famous or most eminent makers now that people, if they had a choice, would, would gravitate towards? Well, Benedict Kohler and David Quinn. Benedict in, in Vermont? They're in Vermont. And where's David Quinn? David Quinn is, I think he's in upstate New York, I think. All oh, right, well. Yeah, I think so. I could yeah. be wrong there. But I suppose there's the top dollars at the moment. Like, right. Victor is up there as well, you know. There's yeah. Like, a lot of good makers, like you've Jeff Wolf turning out the flat sets. You know, sure, and Killian O'Brien down in Bally Ferreter. Yeah. Mickey Dunn down in Limerick. Sure, you know, right. Like, the one thing that struck me the weekend is the standard of makers mm. is shot up. Like right. Like a guy in Japan, Makoto, Nakatushi. All right, and would they have learned their their, their trade from from the Peabreel and or, or the, courses the, the, set the, up in the Peabreel? The Peabreel run a very good course, it's called the Pipecraft course. Right. Where they have their people basically serving their four year apprenticeship making. Them. Right. Well, I suppose the, the apprenticeship is longer than that, but they go in there and they spend four years learning how to make pipes, and the lad in Peabreel and bring in different makers. Yeah. So that's a great initiative. Sure. You know, but like say a lot of people from abroad would have come over here and learnt their trades I know, I know. off different makers, you know. And yeah. And is the difficulty of availability inhibiting the growth of pipers in Ireland and around the world? It was more so than now. Right. Because the pipe the people really have a great scheme now where they lend out a set of pipes for a deposit. All right. For twelve months. And they're getting really good makers to make mm. those chanters. So the standard of pipes that they're getting out to start with. Jesus, compared to when I was starting, there's a right. big difference. Uh, you yeah. started, like, it was very unusual that someone like yourself in your area of the country would play yeah. pipes. Yeah, it was. I, I met Dave Hegarty by accident in Tralee. Well, and I had been playing the whistle for a few years beforehand. So when I met Dave, it kind of sparked my interest. I suppose what initially started my interest was my uncle's record of the Planksty in the Botty Band. Oh, lovely. And then not long after that, I just happened to meet Dave. Right. It was a coincidence. Okay, so it was and meant to be. Sort of took off from there. Yeah. Who's your favourite piper? Just as a Living or dead? No. Give me one. No offence sitting here. I love the old records of Finbar Fury and Paddy Keenan. Oh, lovely. Yeah. Yeah. The, like I, I, I like the control that O'Flynn has over the pipes. Do you know? This? Yeah. Do you know, it, it, it's very hard to pick one. I know, I know what you mean. Like, um, like obviously with Seamus Ennis, Willie Clancy, the Dorans, right. you know, the Johnny Doran, sure. James Doran. Yeah. You know, I, I suppose it's very hard to pick one when you listen to a lot. I know, I know. They all have I something know. that they bring to the table. I know, look, mean? it's a very unfair question, but... It is, John. Thanks. All pipers are fence-sitters <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Leonard, listen, thanks for coming up, okay? I really appreciate it. Thanks, John. All right, take care. Right.